Let us become centered and open our hearts to receive whatever it is that the Spirit would have us receive here today.
In Christ was life, and the life was the light of the world. Let us pray for peace and the things that make for peace as we light the peace candle. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the United Church of Stratford, Vermont, an open and affirming congregation on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, welcome to you who are in the sanctuary, and welcome also to those of you who are online. We acknowledge that we are on the ancestral and unceded land of the traditional caretakers, the Western Abenaki um, or Wabanaki people. Uh, we share the belief that the land and all life are gifts of the Spirit, and our role is to honor and protect the Spirit's creation, building a loving community that includes all. Jody Mitchell wrote the song, He Played Real Good for Free, uh, in New York City in 1969. And here are some excerpts uh, from this uh, beautiful poem that she wrote. I slept last night in a good hotel. I went shopping today for jewels. I was standing on a noisy corner, waiting for the walking green. Across the street he stood, and he played real good on his clarinet for free. And it goes on. Nobody stopped to hear him though he played so sweet and high, they knew he had never been on their TV. And the song ends with Joni saying, she meant to go over and listen, but the light changed and she crossed and left him there. Which is ironic because the truth is she did not leave him there because the spark of his creative love was like a seed in her that grew and grew until it was on TV <laughs> and planted inside millions uh, and billions of people. It became a great tree and still is bearing fruit 55 years later, right? Can you hear it in your head? Yes. Um, it began though as the briefest encounter as one heart touched another and didn't even know it was doing it really. So please be sure to extend your love and care to one another today. Play real good for free, okay? So that every heart here may feel seen and heard and part of this loving community. And the seeds of love we plant here may grow and change the world. Uh, please see the announcements of the Bolton, uh, including some new upcoming events. Um, and there are, the bulletin is thick. Uh, you may want to take it home and read it over the next few days. <laughs> it's big. Um, if you're online, you can find the bulletin in the menu at the top of the uh, welcome page of our website. Um, please join us for uh, refreshments in the par parish hall after the service um, for the uh, pleasure of neighborliness, and, um, and I will get on the Zoom as quickly as I can after the service 
uh, to visit with those of you who are who are there. Um, the, uh, uh, the the plants that are in the uh, in the windows um, are left over from the Bushnell Memorial Service, and the Bushnell family is hoping that uh, that we will uh, take them. Uh, you can take them for yourself or take them if you know somebody who would be um, lifted by having one of these plants. Um, we're going to keep three of them here uh, for the church. Um, so, uh, for the church. So, Any other announcements uh, that need to be made? Yes, did Good morning. This week, our, our friend Ed Eastman lost his dear wife, Vicki, and um, to share our condolences with Ed and his family, there's a card in the back for you to please sign at coffee hour. The second thing is that white basket in the back is for donations to the food shelf in Sharon. Um, Cindy Benson has been kind enough to stop by on her way to the food shelf and pick things up. I would love for her to have something to pick up next month. <laughs> we um, welcome donations of non-perishable food and hygiene products such as toothpaste, diapers. Can you think of anything else that's needed right now, Cameron? No. Coffee, soup, laundry detergent. I've heard there's not been any laundry detergent in a long time, things like that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm not sure we even have that in the bulletin anymore. Maybe we should put it back, a reminder back in the bulletin about that. Yeah. Any other announcements that need to be made? Little Beacon, you have a concert on Friday here, right? Yep. Okay. So announced. <laughs> So Joni Mitchell saw the spark of the spirit in a single street corner clarinetist. And the writer Madeline Lengel um, saw it in a single living cell in her book, uh, A Wind at the Door, which was a, a sequel to A Wrinkle in Time. Lengel imagines a cosmic struggle taking place between a force in the universe that extinguishes entire galaxies um, and the creative source of love, of light and, and life and love. Um, Lengel wants us to see that the same struggle takes place everywhere on Earth. And the struggle for the light matters even in a single cell of a small child. For the child's sake, and because that child may grow up to be a source of love and life and light that encourages many other cells and hearts and nations and all humanity to keep working toward the realm of that positive life-giving spirit on earth. It's significant that a dove was the image of the spirit of the entire universe that first filled Jesus, something as, as small and gentle and as humble as a dove. Um, we find the spirit in the smallest of things and in everything, and it makes all the difference in the world when we let it into our consciousness and open our hearts wide to its presence. Um, so let us do so now as we worship that spirit together with, uh, with thanks and praise. Um, <clears throat> our reader is Deacon Debbie Ritchie. The responsive reading is from Psalm 92, can be found in your bulletin or online. It is good to give thanks to God, to sing praises to your name, O Most High. <clears throat> to the music of the lute and the harp, to the melody of the lyre. For the righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. Children, 
So please join now in singing the hymn from the blue hymn folder, How Lovely Is Your Dwelling. Now uh, we will read together our open and affirming covenant. <clears throat> and I invite you to think of it in the context of the psalm that we just read about the tree of righteousness and in the context of the hymn about the loveliness of being at home in the beloved community of God's realm uh, that is a home for all God's creatures. We, the members of the United Church of Stratford, Vermont, regard all people as beloved children of God. We give thanks for the many and diverse gifts of God among us. We declare ourselves to be an open and affirming congregation. We welcome and accept into full participation, membership, and leadership, people of every sexual orientation, gender identity and expression, race, ethnicity, faith background, political affiliation, age, marital status, and family structure, physical or mental abilities, education, and economic status. We acknowledge with humility that this list is not exhaustive and that the terms are in some cases harmful and involving social constructs. We honor the worth and dignity of all people. We affirm all relationships founded on the principles of love, justice, the golden rule, and treating others as they wish to be treated. We commit ourselves to integrate the spirit of this covenant into all aspects of our church life. We pledge to work to end oppression, discrimination, and hateful behaviors whenever we encounter them, and guided and empowered by the Holy Spirit 
to help create a beloved community of God's will on earth. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Testament reading is from Ezekiel chapter 17, verses 22 through 24. Thus says our God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of your land, I will plant it in order that it may produce boughs and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the field shall know that I am their God. I bring low the high tree, I make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I have spoken, I will accomplish it. The New Testament reading is from Mark chapter 4 verses 26. Through 32. Jesus said, The kingdom of God is as if people would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. They do not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once they go in with their sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable, excuse me, what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. Yet, when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air 
can make nests in its shade. Here ends the reading. Many people feel so discouraged about the world and our nation that they are not engaging in activities that could make a difference in the election. This week, Congress held hearings about the vast amount of clandestine social media election propaganda bombarding the United States from Russia, China, and Iran. And it is all intended to make us feel discouraged uh, and be inactive or to act in ways that destroy our democracy and weaken our nation. This propaganda is effective because it builds on a foundation of truth. The truth is our nation is not perfect. The truth is that the world is changing in dangerous ways and terrible things are happening. But is it true that there is no goodness left worth working for? Is it true that our small contributions make no difference? Is it true that the force of hate and destruction is too strong for love and life and light to overcome? The prophet Ezekiel saw that his nation had abandoned the sacred way. Uh, wealthy, powerful rulers showed no compassion for the poor who, um, who they oppressed or the vulnerable who they neglected. The, the rulers believed that God had made their nation great and that they could do anything they wanted and God would make them even greater. Ezekiel prophesied that Israel would be destroyed because of its arrogant corruption. And sure enough, Babylon invaded, destroyed the temple, scorched the earth, and took much of the population captive. Ezekiel said, though, that God brings low the high tree and makes high the low tree. God would restore the way of justice and mercy, so the nation would be a blessing and a beloved community to all. And the weak and meek, the, the poor and lowly, the low tree would be lifted high. Today's gospel passage took place 600 years later in Roman-occupied Israel, where again, the rich were getting richer while the poor were oppressed and the vulnerable neglected. Jesus called people to shift their allegiance from the materialistic, hard-hearted realm of Caesar and Herod to the spiritual, merciful, and loving realm of God. Jesus lifted the poor and the outcast he healed the sick and the lame. He restored people to sanity and serenity. The problem was that in doing so, Jesus showed the corruption of the political and religious establishment. So the most powerful forces in the world, in his world, aligned against him. The Reverend William Barber is the co-chair of the Poor People's Campaign. Uh, Barbara wrote, from Moses to Jesus, the Bible tells us that those who fought for justice always found themselves hated, hounded, and heaped upon with false accusations. This lack of majority support is why the just must live by faith and must know exactly who we are. So we know who we are, don't we? I mean, for instance, we know the loving world that we long to see. And we know that the obstacles to that world are big and we are small. But do we really know the full extent of our powers? Do we really know what difference it could make if we dared to use our gifts as the Spirit asks? Do we really know what humanity could still become? Don't we live by faith, no matter what? I mean, it's a matter of faith, not fact, 
to believe that we are too small and powerless and the forces against us too great. We just believe that. The scriptures call us to believe that there is a power at work for love and life and light that is beyond our knowing and control. We see it in the seeds in our gardens. The scriptures tell us that we can work with that hidden power, that force. The psalm says, the, flour- the righteous flourish like the palm tree and grow like a cedar in Lebanon. They are planted in the house of God. In old age, they still produce fruit. They are always green and full of sap. Well, look at these paintings. Look at these paintings done by Marcia Bushnell. And think of all that Ken and Marcia did in their old age. And you can think about many others. But this sanctuary was like a great tree last Saturday, or a forest of trees that had grown from the seeds of love that Ken and Marcia planted. No one mentioned this, and I, I, don't, I don't think it's widely known, but Marcia had a map. You know about Marcia's map? Marcia had a map with pins that marked all the places in the world where people were suffering oppression of some kind. She put those pins in, and she wept over everyone, and she raged, and she felt the deepest longing to make a difference. And she knew how small she was, but she did what she could. She raised an extraordinary family. She was active in this and other communities. And she brought forth paintings to move others to love and action. Her fruits, her fruits becoming seeds in us, inspiring our own fruits. The first Christian monks fled to the desert from a corrupt and violent society in the second and third centuries, just as Uh, Ancient Chinese Taoist poets fled to the mountains from their corrupt empire. And they shared the same wisdom, those uh, Taoists and Christians, expressed by the saying of the desert fathers and mothers, go into your cell and it will teach you everything. They knew themselves to be small and seemingly powerless, and they made themselves even smaller confined in a simple monastic cell or mountain hut. And what it taught them, what they learned, was that the power of the spirit or the Tao was flowing through all things, including them. They, they went on to produce teachings and poems and acts of compassion and justice that changed history and that still inspire us today. Jesus said that the realm of God is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all. The film uh, Freedom Song um, is a realistic fictional account of the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Committee, or SNCC, SNCC. Um, coming to help local black people desegregate a small town in Mississippi. And if you haven't seen it, it's hard to find, but I highly recommend it. At the end of the film, the main protagonist, a a high school student named Owen, has been sentenced to four months in prison with other leaders uh, for leaving school and marching to the city hall and holding a protest. Owen is raging and despairing in their jail cell, shouting that the protests have led to nothing. Segregation has not budged. Daniel Wall, a character modeled on SNCC's Bob Moses. I don't know if you remember Bob Moses, but he was one of the just most beautiful of civil rights leaders. Um, Daniel Wall says quietly, Read the paper tomorrow, Owen. 
a group in New Orleans heard about what you did, and they are coming to town to pick up where you left off. They saw your light. And he then explains that he joined SNCC and came to help their town from Chicago because he saw the light of the first lunch counter sit-ins from a thousand miles away. And he says, that light also inspired the first freedom riders. And they carried that flame all through the South until they were stopped, but not before you saw it. And it inspired you. So when you walked out of that school, you didn't just make a march. You picked up a torch. And now other folks have seen your light. And they are coming here to carry it on because you can't right now. And if they go to jail too, other folks will pick up their torch and carry it someplace else. So you're not on your own, Owen. You're part of something bigger than you. You're part of the movement. That is the faith that the psalmist and prophets and Jesus wanted us to have. And it's the truth, it's the truth they wanted us to see. Those of us who want to create God's realm on earth, who dedicate our lives to the cause of love and life and light, who want to bring down the high tree and lift up the low tree, we are not alone. We're part of something bigger than us. We are part of the same movement that has existed really from the dawn of time because it's the struggle for love and life and light that was in that very first living cell that is still in every one of the trillions of cells in each of our bodies. We do not know what will come of the small seeds we sow, the smile, the helping hand, the meal for a sick neighbor, the song we sing in choir, the activism for a just cause, the time in silent prayer. We don't know what those seeds will grow into. We can only trust that the Spirit will move through these things in unforeseeable ways, and they will bear fruit. Jesus looked out at people like us, people with every right to feel discouraged, with every right to think that we are too small to make a difference. But Jesus said, look, you are part of the movement. Just plant your tiny seeds and watch what happens. It does not matter how flawed or old or weak we are. All we need to do is sow our seeds and the Spirit will do the rest. Let us pray together in silence. Amen.
Please be seated. Let us join together in a spirit of uh, a prayer. Let us put our hearts and minds together as one in prayer. Holy God, we thank you for the, uh, the gifts of watching seeds turn into great apple trees with turkeys and deer in them. <laughs> um, we thank you for the Gandhis and the Mandelas and Goodalls and um, we thank you for those in our community um, who have inspired us, um, Ken and Marcia and so many others. Um, we thank you for all the ways in which we have been touched. You know, we've come into a, come into a, a room <laughs> uh, grieving and lost and, and through just simple kindness and, and word, a word or two, found ourselves again, found what we need, that high rock to get onto out of, the, out of the waves that are threatening to take us down. We thank you for all these, these miracles and we, we, we thank you for the ability to have humility and to say we do not know, you know, we do not know where this is going. We do not know what good our efforts are going to be. What We don't know what difference it's going to make when we smile at this checkout clerk. You know, we don't know what it's going to do. And there's so, there's a release in that. You know, we are not in control of the universe. You are. And we just do our part and trust. So with these monolithic problems that we're facing with these these huge threats of doom and gloom in the world, um, the environment and the, the nation, the hate, the, the the millions and millions of people who who are divided, um, we we ask that you help us to rest in the peace of not knowing, that we not get lost, that we not tell ourselves the stories of, of, you know, the fearful stories of not being able to make a difference, of, of it being hopeless. Please help us to be, to rest in the humility of not knowing and know only that we need to keep going. We need to keep on loving and serving and using every gift we have and every opportunity we have to make a difference. So we thank you for that faith, that hope, and that love and ask that you help us in this day in some small way to go out and, and touch others around us with this light. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please remember that we're taking our offering online on the welcome page of our website, or you can send donations into the church by mail, uh, or in the sanctuary, you can place your uh, offering in the basket on the table on the back. Um, everything we put in the offering plate is a seed, a seed of love and life and light. And we have no idea how that seed's going to grow or who it will help or who will find just the shelter they need in its branches. All we know is that we're handing the seed 
to God to serve those in need. So however and whenever and whatever you give, um, do so knowing that it is an act of the Spirit moving through you. Um, and now we're going to sing uh, a hymn um, that I'm going to suggest we change a word in it. Uh, it's number 460 in the dark red pilgrim hymnal. So number 460 in the dark red pilgrim hymnal, um, or blue if you've got a blue one. Um, it's we plow the fields and scatter. And I want to suggest in the last line, you change O oh, Father to O oh, Mother. I mean, I know that it's Father's Day, but uh, there's a lot of masculine stuff in this hymn. And I want to balance it out a little bit. So, um, you know, and God has both masculine and feminine aspects in the Bible. It is non-binary and gender fluid in the Bible. Um, and the Bible says humanity was created in God's image. So God must include all possible gender identities. And all gender identities must be holy. So let us sing together in that faith. <laughs> And the benediction, uh, well, before the benediction, you may please remain standing. Um, these flowers are just so beautiful. It paints the wayside flowers. Anya, did, did you do this? Um, I added some fresh water and the rest I used to from the bouquet of Right, so this is, 
So Anya has added to the Bushnell Memorial Arrangements. So what a beautiful um, continuity and uh, just gorgeous. So thank you for painting the, thank you God for painting the Wayside Flower. Thank you Anya for touching it up. So may all the great power of God's spirit and all the riches of God's glory now strengthen all your inner being. And may Christ touch and transform your heart as you are rooted and grounded in love. May you be filled with all the fullness of the Spirit, a power in you that can accomplish far more than you can ask or imagine. So go forth, a seed and sign of God's realm, blessed by the guidance and power of the Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen. And please be seated to end the service in a spirit of prayer as we listen to the postlet. Isn't that beautiful? Um, Anamika has chosen that for Father's Day many, uh, many years. <laughs> it's beautiful. So, thank you.